All right, we're going to start the meeting with the pledge. Thank you. All right, we'll start with the public portion of the meeting. Uh, Bruce Harway. Yeah, good evening, thank you. Uh, what I would like to do is just give you an update on the, um, the paperwork that's been going on the, for the uh, proposed excavation of the Northeast uh, Bottleneck in Georgica Cove. Uh, so I won't run through the long history because it's been dragging out for about a year or so, but, but in terms of the most recent history, we had revised the engineering plan and sent in and provided additional information and sent it back into DEC. And I guess it was about a week ago, DEC responded saying that they did not agree with the, the uh, engineering report that Drew Bennett had prepared for us. And they still wanted proof that the proposed width that we, were, that we wanted, which was 40 feet, was in fact the minimum. They were leaning towards 20 feet, but they didn't provide any evidence or calculations to show what they were basing that on. Uh, so I brought that information to Drew Bennett, who prepared another report, which you have a copy of. And basically what he says in his report, and shows pretty clearly that 20 feet is absolutely not adequate. Uh, 40 feet may not be the minimum, but 40 feet is what he thought was the most reasonable, particularly given the fact that uh, it, pr it prolongs the life of the, of the excavation because we already have, you lose about six feet, I guess it is, or eight feet of uh, base channel just by the slope, and then you start adding sedimentation into that and quickly you're 20 feet becomes l less than eight feet, your 40 feet uh, gets down into the 20s, et cetera. So at any rate, the compromise that he thought would work would be 30 feet, and he does the calculations to show that would, from his point of view, that would be an absolute minimum that would be required to not only provide the tidal exchange that we're looking for, but also to ensure that there's some life to the project. So uh, he has put together that report, and with your support, I'd like to go ahead and send that back to DEC with the copies of the plan. Bruce, quick question. Has Drew had um, a dialogue with the DEC on other jobs, and has he been successful in compromise, uh, more so from the DEC's perspective? Um, yeah, it bothers yeah. me that the DEC would say 40 is not good enough, it has to be 20 with no explanation. Um, so. Right, well I guess to answer your first question, you know, Drew's worked with them quite a bit, has you know, a good relationship with them, um, but of course they don't always agree with everything he does and vice versa. Uh, in <coughs> terms of the, um, the letter that came from DEC, when I looked at it, my first thought was that they're saying no to the 40, but they're very open to moving ahead on this thing. And so it wasn't really an insistence on 20. It was just that they wanted to see more proof that whatever number we're coming up with was, could be justified. And I think that Drew's provided that. And you may have said, and I apologize, do you think 30 would be suitable? Yeah, I don't yeah. think, I, I do, and I think it's the right way to proceed at this point. I, I don't think that Drew was off when he said 40 initially. I think that makes more sense, but there's no sense fighting at this point if we can get by with something that they seem ready to accept and will work for us. Given that life of the project is a big factor here, um, are there estimates of the project life based on 40 and 30 feet? Not really, no. no time estimates to me, no, not really. All right, I'm just curious. Bruce, are there any other uh, impediments to the project at this point? I know methodology was discussed at one point. Uh, do we see anything else that No, when, uh, at the time that we submitted the package, the second package, not the one I'm you know, about to submit, but the other package addressed all their concerns, at least we thought we had addressed them all. And in the letter that came back most recently, they didn't mention any of those. They only picked mm -hmm. on this one spot. So if we were to go back to their written record, then this is the only thing that's holding us up at this point. Okay. Thank you. But 40 would be better than 30. I, I guess going with 30 and then if we have to do it again, we'll. Exactly, yeah. we're going for a maintenance permit anyway, which means that it's gonna be that, you know, the process will be in place and. So you'll be able to keep it at 30. You want to go over to Shoreline? 
Uh, I think that in order, to, let's say we did the 30 and then it, and then we felt that it has narrowed down and we needed to do more. I don't think we, <coughs> as of right, I don't think we get to go in, but we would certainly be able to go back and within that 10 we year have time frame. Serious make argument. The case. Then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask a silly question. I mean, and the reason why perhaps I forgot, because it's been a long process, what is the um, reason for that, uh, the widening of the bottleneck to help flush that area out? Yeah, to flush it. Currently, there's a, a little bit of a meandering uh, path that's maybe anywhere from five to 10 feet uh, wide, which is the, the only part that's not vegetated. And then the rest of it's been cut down. When it looked open during the winter time, that was because the pond level had come up and covered the cut Phragmites. So there's a, th a thick Phragmites mat on either side of that five to 10 foot channel. And even the channel itself, as it currently exists, is, uh, is not going to allow tidal flow, even if it was wider, because it's too high on elevation. So this is going to take everything lower, plus make it wider. Got it. Thank you. Well, I'm okay proceeding yeah. with the 30 foot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In, the, in the middle seems to make sense. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, and the, the argument that the slope, uh, you know, <coughs> makes us lose some of the width is, is definitely a valid yeah. argument, I think. It's, yeah. it's basic physics. It's I mean, really good. The math know. seems to yeah. Yeah. Uh, substantiate that. Okay. We'll I get the necessary tidal flush. I think we're all on board. Yep. Hmm. Okay. What do you need? What's the name of the point on the north side of the head? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Trivia time. <laughs> That's right. Geographic trivia. Seth Barnes point. Seth Barnes. Okay. With no E in Barnes. <laughs> So what do you, do you need, do we need a motion? What do you need for us? Not no, nothing motion. at this point. It's I just, just wanted to brief you, make sure you're on board with that, and in which case I'll submit it back to DC. Okay, okay. great, thank you, Good, Bruce. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Rick, did you want to go ahead with the other, or are we hold on, holding off on the Do I take Yeah, we can, we can move forward with that. Sure. At the last meeting, we had uh, <coughs> brought forth a proposed resolution to help standardize the Phragmites application process and Diane, who couldn't make it tonight, had asked to make a few revisions, which she did since the last meeting and submitted them to all the members of the board. And I've taken a look at Diane's revisions, and I think that they're fine and uh, helped to clean up the document a little bit. So I would like to um, offer this resolution tonight uh, to the board and to the public, if uh, everyone is okay with that. Sure. We'll go ahead and read it. Sure. Uh, the following resolution will be offered by Rick Drew and seconded by Brian Burns. Brian Burns. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Freeholders and Commonality of the Town of East Hampton hereby desire all previously approved permits issued for Phragmite removal renew on November 30th in each calendar year. And whereas the renewals will be subject to the following trustee guidelines and conditions. A completed trustee application for renewal of the Phragmite removal project is to be submitted to the Board of Trustees prior to November 15th of each calendar year. An updated and detailed description of the project is to be submitted with each renewal application. The project update will contain photographs of the subject property depicting the project activities of the past growing and cutting season, as well as its current status, and a project narrative supporting the photographs submitted. These two sections will evolve as the project continues each year, thus creating a project portfolio. Each project renewal will be subject to the appropriate members of the trustee board committee completing an on-site inspection. Said inspections to be completed prior to November 30th of each year. Should the trustee board deem upon review of the renewal application, project description, or the on-site visit that the project violates the originally permitted work and or any of its conditions, all project work is to cease immediately. The applicant may reapproach the trustee board once any and all violations of the original permit have been resolved to the board's satisfaction. Therefore, be it resolved, the renewal guidelines contained within this resolution will be provided to all applicants upon issuance of a Phragmites removal permit and be it further resolved, those guidelines shall take effect upon a majority vote of the trustees. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I support it, yeah. Great, thank you. Good work. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your input on it, Bruce. Are we going to um, 
like put those on the website and stuff like that so people yeah i think that's a logical next step rick so as we start to codify more areas like this we'll develop a chapter and, and this would be a good first step yeah. so that's a great great thought thank you is there anybody else who wishes to approach the board no nope. okay <coughs> excuse me move on to new business uh, Akabana Cog Creek, C. Jensen, request for inspection for certificate of occupancy at, at 111 Gerard Drive. I, I did have a chance to go and, and check out the property. Um, you know, it, it, the neighbor had recently done a very similar thing and we, you know, passed that and approved it. They just need their CFO. Um, they had some work done on the revetment. Uh, it looks, it looked fine to me. The only thing that I noticed was on the survey, um, it, it shows these pavers here, which actually aren't there yet. Um, all the slate, I, I believe that it's the slate for these pavers is still in the in the driveway over here. Um, so I guess they're still working on that. So I don't know if uh, I don't know I don't know how that works for the CFO. Like, are pavers really part of, of that? If they don't have the pavers down on the ground yet, can they can they get? Well, the I CFO? think if they're part of the survey document, uh, they should be in place before yeah, they just signed off on it, only because if they made a mistake and accidentally put them in the wrong location, yeah. there would be a disconnect. There's a pile, you're saying, right? Yeah, there's a pile of, of yeah. thick slate in the driveway still. Um, okay. It looks like it is meant to be the papers that are actually already on the survey here. At least the the, uh, the, the area where the papers will go is, is already kind of cleared out, and they actually looks like they cleared away some of that beach grass that was there to make way for the pavers. Um, but the vegetation looks looks good there. It looks like all the, the lines of, of the clearing of vegetation and revetment seem to, by eye, you know, match up with what's on the survey here. Right. With regards to the pavers, because yeah. I've had similar situations, <coughs> I'll call up the homeowner and inquire mm -hmm. oftentimes to find out that uh, within a couple of days they'll be back in place and yeah. do like maybe a, a revisit if you think it's uh, big enough to do that. Just a thought. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I can I can give her a call tomorrow. I, mm -hmm. I talked to her on the on the phone when I went before I went to visit today. But um, sure. She wasn't there at the pro on the property when I when I visited. Gotcha. Okay. So um, that's that's a good idea. I'll give her a call and see see what's up with that. But yeah, I guess we can't really go ahead with closing this out until we know that the, all the work is completed. Yeah, to what it's on the survey here. Nothing's being held up by it, right? I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't know. She's called mm -hmm. the office a couple times to get to get this through. So um, I, I think Arlene, you talked to her. Does it? Do, do you know if she has any particular um, uh, hardship for that she needs the urgency of this? You know, like, is it really urgent for her? Okay. Yeah, she right. might be trying to clear it up through the building department. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. When, yeah, when 20, did this 2010, project? I believe. Permit. The permit was oh, 2010. 2010. Yes. Yeah. So and the pavers aren't down yet. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. Just where is the? I don't know. Pavers, pavers <coughs> don't really. She might have piled them up there to stop them from getting hit by the water or something like that. Yeah. Perhaps. Uh, it looked like there was, it didn't look like there were pavers there already before, though, because oh. the beach grass roots were still there. Yeah. And it looked like some of them had cut, had cut down to, to make way for the pavers. What's the revetment? Pavers, pavers don't play any part in our portion of this. They really don't, yeah. though. See, yeah. that's why well, I'm that being said, then, seeing uh, what your yeah. opinion is. So everything is good? I mean, as, as far as our side of the permit goes, yeah, the, the revetment work l seems to be finished uh, to our specifications, and oh, okay. it matches the survey. It's just that the, the survey doesn't actually match what I saw there in other aspects that don't really More affect our holdings. Portions. Yeah. You want to make a motion to close it out? As it relates to... As it relates to all the trustee work. Uh, our, uh, yeah, I mean, that's fair. It's not really anything that, that concerns <coughs> us that's holding it up. I'm not particularly concerned about the... The, the lack of the pavers, they're there on the property somewhere. I'm sure they'll go in. Uh, I'll call her to make sure, just to see what the deal is, but. Okay, okay if, if you all feel like there's no, no issue with that and, and we can do that, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, close out our, you know, our permit for um, Jensen. I have a second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, uh, proposal from Saskia Surveying for aerial <coughs> photo <coughs> and help. Topography of Georgia Capon Project. All right, does everybody have a copy of this proposal? He can do the to topography of the of the pond portion where we want to do the project um, with a drone. 
So, um, which project are you referring to? In Georgia Capon. The bottleneck? No. No, no, the no. dredging, the, the big dredging. So we thought that this would be a good thing to have in our, in the folder. Um, it would cost $2,400 for that. It's basically an aerial survey with, with the actual, um, topography of the bot that whole shut the entire shoal. Yeah, that's important. So yeah. the whole contour. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think Jim Jim deal? was looking into it. He got two different prices. They're both within dollars of each other. Saskis is a licensed surveyors and um the, the whole thing come you know it's gonna be very useful for all the work we're gonna do, especially for the ten years it you know, there's ways to calculate yardage on it and everything like that. It mm -hmm. looks like a good thing, and now would probably be a good time to get it done when it's done and there's no water in the pond. So this will equate to a, a stamp a survey. survey. It'll be a stamp mm -hmm. survey, valid, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Approved yeah. survey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm in um, favor of it. Yeah, it's really useful information, and, and yeah. that's not a bad price for something. So yes. Do you want to? Would you sure. like to address the... Drone expert. No, not at all. I just wanted to mention to the board, um, Sarah Davis and friends at Georgia Capon, that we paid for a drone um, survey of the pond in late August, oh. and we'd be happy to make those shots available. We did the whole perimeter of the pond. It may not be exactly what you want, but um, we'd be happy to make them available to you to see if it's what you could use, or at least partially what you could use. Yes. Okay. So maybe so you we look at that first, look at that first and then make your decision. Okay. 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 Right. Thank well, you. Basically, this is going to be used to calculate yardage and stuff right. like that, and to plan out right. it, subsequent dredging. So you know, it was pond level was very high when we took these, so it may not work for you. I just wanted to make it available to you yeah. if you okay. if you wanted it. All right. Thank you. So we had talked about having a committee meeting next Monday. Is that something perhaps we could cover at that time as well? Sure, I can I can bring the, the file. Yeah. That would be great. You okay. want to just Thanks. authorize it so um, Well, can we authorize it if, if it, that doesn't cover what we want? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So can I have a we motion. Use, uh, so uh, let me can I make a motion yeah. with I'll, I'll make a motion to to um, authorize the trustee to enter into a, an agreement to provide the Surveying we need of Georgia Capon for the purposes of the dredging projects. I would second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any one of us, I mean? <coughs> said a trustee. Do you want to say Francis or just anybody? Clerk. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, th I just heard a trustee. You know, I, th I thought I mentioned, I thought that's what I said. We, okay, okay. we authorized. We authorized the trustee clerk to uh, go into an agreement. Should he, you know, should the committee decide that it's. Us yeah. For the survey, yeah. should we find that the information yeah, I mean, on the Friends of Georgia Capone survey is not the adequate? Friends of Georgia Capone survey is perfectly what we need. Then, yeah. You know. All right, Nat Aye. Peak. We're not going to have, a, you know, we might not have a meeting. Nat Peak, Lazy Point, application to Devon Yacht Club, removal of or grading of sand accumulated at fixed stock. Anyone going down there to? Look yeah. at that. Yeah. That's the one that came up at the last meeting. It wasn't yeah. wasn't part of I the thing. I did get an email sent another one. Bef yeah, just yeah. before leaving the office that they've yeah, agreed to allow it. us to take that sand should we want it. Hmm. Or they'll grade it, right? Or they'll grade it. This has always been part of the job. It was just never <clears throat> it was just never made part of the actual permit in the past. It's the sand that accumulates. I guess they just take it and they put it back on the beach mostly. Mm -hmm. If we have a use for it, they, they also stockpile it, not to any great degree, to the right of the parking lot when you you know kind of yeah. head in. I've seen it there too. Well, yeah. Which, there, there was some talk about the possibility of it being used on another location across the bay. Okay. Um, I don't know if you still yeah, we, want to try to work that out, you know, but they, they've said that they will make it available to to us. That the up updrift. Yeah, yeah. Back up to but you know, um, do we know how much the, sand we're talking about? It's actually that that one with the the sandbags there over on the stretch. Yeah, oh, but they, they uh, haven't uh, they haven't approached us or you know, conceptually it seems like a good idea, but we haven't had anybody hmm. you know approach us and ask about it. Right. Sure. <coughs> 
What committee yeah. uh, would that be under? Whose committee? That's not Pete Lazy Point. Okay. And I don't think I'm, neither of them are here tonight. Right. Jim had mentioned he was okay with what Devin has done, but mm -hmm. he's not really here to speak about this yeah. new development of possibly. There's no, if this, this the isn't pressing, we should okay, probably good. just table it. Yeah. So we'll talk to Jim when he gets back then? Yeah. All right, I think good. we should table this one. Okay. Okay, a letter from Josh Dayton, uh, renovations to Eastman residence located at lot 13N and 14N at Lazy Point. We're gonna start interior work, um, displacement of the dumpster, mm -hmm. the usual stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's good that they're communicating with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think we need to make a motion or anything, no. just a notification. <clears throat> um, email. email from building inspector. Encroachment of a garage located at lots 22N and 23N onto lot 21N at Lazy Point. I wonder how this even came up. Um, it's a new buyer. Oh, okay. And Didn't we discuss this at some point before? Yeah. yeah, we ended up doing two leases, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to remember. They want to. This is some. Okay, there's a sur they attached a survey, um, and they're looking to get an updated CO for everything except the garage that's close to the property line um, because they say it belongs to the neighboring property, not them. So now, the, the problem is there's another house on that property, so there can't be an additional lease there. Um, here it is. It's a very, very small encroachment, I believe. I'll say. I mean, we, but yeah. we own all of that property. Yeah, there. from a trustee purview, we haven't. Right, we own all the property, and we've explained that to Ann. And because there are other situations like that, I believe, on driveways and outbuildings. Rick, well, you have any ideas on that? Uh, which one are you talking about? Uh, it, it, it's one of the properties that were recently sold in Lazy Point. What was the name? Remember the one where we gave them a second lease on a property? Remember the name? That was an unimproved um, lot. That was Alarco was the seller. Oh, well, you, oh, oh. And in this case, there's, well, a, been there's, two a dwelling, there's a dwelling on the second there's lot. There's a yeah. You're by the Alarco, Chini Alarco property. Well, that's a reference. This is another situation, another property, where there's an <clears throat> encroachment of a garage onto the neighboring lot. And that neighboring lot is unleased? It is leased with a dwelling, with a primary dwelling. To the other person, to the other, le to another person. Two different parties. It appears to be a very small portion of the garage. So what are you proposing? I mean, that's well, true throughout Lazy Point. I know. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's not uncommon. I think we need you to write a letter to Ann, uh, you know, reiterating. So the owner is looking for CFO, is that what they're yeah, looking for? On everything except the garage. <laughs> but, but it is their garage, is it not? Or is it the neighbor's garage? They should be seeking to see if I want everything <coughs> that they're using. So let me see the survey. Because if you stop issuing CFOs on people in Lazy Point that have ported their structures on someone else's lot, then no one in Lazy Point will have a CFO. We don't want to do that. And Ann's claiming that the property owner doesn't want to agree to let it slide. I mean, the, the other. The neighboring property owner. Yeah. However, that's we being, haven't heard anything from them. That's being encroached upon. That, that's a, this is our chain. Yep. Um, all right, so this is the survey of the lot we're talking about, right? Yes. You see that little sliver that hangs over the edge? A yeah, associated with the garage. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, to me, this is a, it's not really a C of O issue. It's not a zoning issue. Um, this is more in the nature of an encroachment. Let's pretend, for example, they own the property. The town wouldn't really get into whether or not, um, you know, let's say these were all private lots. You guys were not involved, all right? 
the person with the garage <coughs> would either be improperly encroaching on the neighbor, in which case the neighbor could go to court and eject them. Mm. It has nothing to do with town zoning, it's just a case of it's, it's trespass. Or, which would be more likely the case here, the, uh, the property owner would have been there for well over 10 years, like, you know, maybe 50 or 60 years, and they would have an adverse possession claim. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the neighbor could still try to eject them, but probably would lose. So it's really a question of, um, you know, whether it's a trespass or an adverse possession claim, um, but it's a property rights issue. It doesn't have to do with town zoning or property. compliance with building zone. Well, now, because it's your property, that means the issue could come back to you, but it's not really a building department issue. In other words, if the, let's say the neighbor doesn't like the fact that the neighbor to this property doesn't like the fact that this owner has parted their garage in the neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. The neighbor should bring that up with you because you are the right. landlord and you're right. leasing both the lots. You're leasing to this current owner well, and you're leasing to the neighbor who has to deal with the encroachment. Could we just choose, could we modify the property line? You potentially could. I mean, you're gonna need to, well, you really, you redo your leases every year, so you yeah. could. I mean, I, you'd probably try to work it out yeah. amicably, but yes, ultimately at the end of the day, it's your property, everyone's in a short-term lease, you can say, hey, look, this person's building is on, you know, whatever the lot number's here. Let's see, let's see if we have lot numbers on here. Yeah, 22, 23, and 21. Um, yeah, so 21N is the lot to the west. The subject is 22 and 23. Um, so you could, you could say, you know, part of 21 in the future will be leased to uh, the owner, you know, the, the lessee of 22 and 23. Now, I just say that with reference to that garage, there are walkways and other improvements shown on these two properties, some of which seems to straddle the property line, and you know, you're gonna have to delve into who's, you know, whose are those. So, but the bottom line is, from the building department's point of view, I don't see the issue. It's not really a building, if, if, if the owner of, sorry, if the lessee of 22 and 23 has a minor encroachment on 21, that's between them and 21, and between them and you. It has nothing to do with, so uh, she can issue a C of I I don't see any reason she can't issue okay. a C Just so we don't see this <clears throat> on the agenda too often, would you reach out and explain that to- To Joanne? The building inspector? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, yeah so give me a, give me a- um, oh, Okay, good. Shoot me, you know, copy me with an email or whatever you're sending, and I'll go talk to Ann. Yeah. Okay. And maybe the homeowner as well, if- Right. You know, if we- well, I'll talk to Ann. I mean, I think right. I should be communicating probably just directly with Ann Glennon. Okay. Uh, but the, I mean, this issue could come up a lot because if you look at you know if you look at surveys, yeah, the survey of Lazy Point, much. everything is a little bit off with respect to the lot. <coughs> I wonder mm -hmm. if um, going forward when we do our renewals on the lease, that we put a paragraph in to the folks that. Um, going into contract with us as a reminder that we do have these situations and in some ways you know that's what makes it kind of unique mm -hmm. and <laughs> let's all get along I mean the other thing you could do potentially someday look because again we have we have a survey of lazy point we know where the lot lines are we know I don't know when the last survey was done for improvements but I think it's not that long ago I'm not sure yeah I don't know when um, exactly when is it that that long ago then again, I don't think there's been that much built since then. But you know, you could at some point consider, what seems to have happened is that buildings were built as though all the lot lines were a little bit off, and I forget which direction there is, to the east or to the west, but the lot lines don't quite line up. Mm -hmm. So you have numerous examples of people's structures that are on their neighbor's lease lot. <coughs> at some point you might wanna do leases by meets and bounds and just shift everything by, see if, see if it's possible to shift everything by a few feet and keep it uniform. All right. I'd like to sit with the uh, Lazy Point uh, Association uh, when that time came to kind of hear everybody. Yeah, I, I would not do it oh, unilaterally. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that unilaterally. No, no, You'd have no. to sit down with them. We want it to work for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And it may be fine just to leave it the way it is. I don't know. Okay. You'll shoot me an email, Francis, on this, and are you emailing Ann yourself, and then I'll follow up. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. copy me, and I'll talk to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and and I will need to get a copy. Um, 
get a copy of that to um, in the office or wherever. Okay. So I can bring that with me. So this does bring up that bigger issue that we haven't had lazy point surveyed since 86. Hmm. Yeah. That's as old as I am. Apparently. I was born in 1986. <coughs> oh, baby. Wow. So we, You're a baby. Yeah. as long as I've been alive, we've never had a lazy point resurveyed, which you know is is kind of a big concern now that I hear that because uh, <coughs> it's a floodplain essentially. Lazy point is, is mm -hmm. kind of a large floodplain, and we have sea level rise constantly. It sounds like it could encroaching be on things. So large. And other spots there where, yeah. where where there's you know flooding or, or people there that I've heard from um, have said that there are certain wa you know the, where the water line is has changed over the years in some areas. So I think yeah. even for that reason, it would be really uh, prudent for us to think about resurveying the whole the whole of Lazy Point of our of our property. Last of the new business, Long Wharf. Maintenance dredging has commenced on the Long Wharf, and they're using the Haven's Beach for place, placement of the spoils. Did you get down and look at it at all? I <coughs> saw pictures of it. I didn't okay, the, the actual okay. beach. But it looks like the, the spoil is, is reasonable okay. sand from what I've seen. Originally, the, the initial sediment that was coming out was rather dark and right. murky, but it, it appears like it's cleaned up quite a bit in the, the later, yeah, the later deposit of more compatible sand. Isn't that down by where they have the carnival? Mm -hmm. The fireman's up yeah. there. Yep, okay. yeah. right there. Bill and I went down and looked at it. Is it a lot of sand? It's going to be quite a bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they basically dug a trench the entire length of Haven's Beach. And they're, and they're going to fill the trench in with the spoils, and then I guess bring top dress the other right. stuff yeah. back over the top of it. Yeah. Um, Have you ever seen but that the thing is, yeah. nobody ever talked to us about it. Yeah. Rick, Haven Beach. Concerned. Do you believe we own it? Again, you mean the beach itself? Yes, the beach itself. Uh, I, I would. At the park. I would have to see a deed. <clears throat> I will say this: the trustees in the late 1800s were selling water lots down there, even leasing underwater land. So it wouldn't surprise me if they made land sales that right, went right down to the bay, meaning they didn't, didn't reserve the beach. But I can't but know that without seeing an actual chain of You were gonna order a, de uh, a deed, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't do that yet. Do you okay. want me to? I, I should yeah, okay. yeah. So we talked, I think, before the meeting. Yeah, because if, I mean, we need to address this with them okay. if it is ours. Mm -hmm. We should have been a part of the conversation. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have anything else you want to add? No, not at this Anyone? time. I think no? okay. we should uh, hear we're from we're Rick looking. first before we go any further. We're getting mm -hmm. some gathering information. Yep. Oh, come to think of it, yeah, over the weekend I was down at the wharf and I saw the dredging mm -hmm. equipment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's yes. a serious project. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good navigational dredging <clears throat> project. It's just a matter of how they're managing the disposition of this foil. <laughs> Okay, old business, um, Georgia Capon dredging, yeah. South Inlet, that's a non-issue at this point. We talked Is about... The status report on that? Too? On which part of it? On the, when that might occur and what the process is from here to there. Um, our most recent contact with DEC I gotta refresh my brain, John. Wednesday. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, I, they're basically um, they're basically moving in the direction we all discussed at the meeting we had with them. <coughs> they're looking for a way to just consider the um, <coughs> the dredge project and the cut for the dredge project just by itself. <coughs> All right. Yeah, and we made a suggestion that they they consider the, the nine thousand yards of sand that is um, moved into the ocean by opening the pond be considered our contribution to the west. Um, so so things are moving along. We're uh, I'm always hopeful. But, um, we've had congressional activity. Um, and, uh, 
Well, my last conversation with them was that they were trying to get everybody together on the same page so they could just treat this project as this project um, with all the other stuff to be covered by our, um, our, management, our plan. management plan. So that's where we are. So basically we haven't gotten any closer <laughs> that we know of, but uh, well, we're, we're they're talking. I guess I would just reiterate to you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, coming up. Uh, John Hall on behalf of uh, the George Coast Association. Uh, I just want to reiterate that to the extent that we can be helpful in any way in moving this project forward, that we are available. And I, I talked to Mr. Taylor before. Uh, we spoke this evening, so I knew a good part of the report, but I wanted to mm -hmm. uh, have an opportunity yeah. to just reinforce our availability to assist in any reasonable way. Could you, excuse me, either Rick or Bill, could you just take a, a, a moment and just bring the public up to speed because there's a big proponent that's missing because you folks know what you're talking about, but others may not. Well, in the past, the trustees have... Um, at one time had a 10-year had a, a permit. There's a huge, there's a huge shoal area of sand on the southern part of Georgia Capone, and what it does it, is it interferes with the um, effective dredging, uh, the effective letting of the pond. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a proposal before the DEC right now to, um, to enter into a 10-year maintenance program to remove 100, a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand 150,000 cubic yards of that sand and um, use that 15, sand. 15,000. 15,000 a year for 10 a year. years. Right. Yeah. I mean, the whole project is 150,000 or, you know, that's, that's what we're aiming at. And by removing the sand in the proper places, um, we'll, we'll enhance our ability to, to let the pond successfully We'll also place the pond in a position that should there be a natural opening, it will occur in a spot that's not dangerous to surrounding um, residences and, and areas. And um, the sand is beautiful sand that will be used to nourish beaches. Um, it'll be sold to, the, to a bidder, bidding process, same as they did 10 years ago. Um, and we've been working on this permit and mm -hmm. Uh, right now, it, things are looking like they're moving along fairly quickly. We we had a bunch of obstacles. We've we've entered into a memorandum of understanding with the surrounding property owners. Um, we had a huge meeting with the DEC, at which we got almost everything worked out. Um, like I said, we at the last meeting they were talking about they wanted some of the sand to go to the west and. We're not in agreement with that. The city's details are worked out. The, my last conversation, I think we might have made a big stride forward in, um, in the amount of sand that has to go to the west, you know, considering that opening the pond makes a fairly large contribution to the total drift, which is always westward. And um, Bill, yes. do, we, do we, excuse me, do we have an engineer working on this as well? Um, uh, and the only reason I say that is what you're saying could be spot on, but I would, you know, yeah. in terms of the actual, you know, more credentials, the better. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have, the, 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 this, this project's been going on for a while. This board of trustees took it on with a lot of vigor. Mm -hmm. There is a consulting firm Good. with of engineers and everything else that have prepared all the plans and Excellent. stuff like that. We're kind of in the nitty gritty fighting to get it done right now. It's, it's past the engineering stages or the political stage. So. Yeah. Now, one of the upcoming <coughs> developments may be the uh, completion of a draft format of our management plan, and that may be another contact opportunity with yeah. members of the state uh, DEC department. So maybe we could uh, confer further on that opportunity and uh, ha have a contact point with them in the near future. So that might be something we want to consider. Yeah. If we find things are lagging, it's an, an opportunity to reach yeah. out and right, yeah. try and move things yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. Right now, my feeling is that we're making a little, we're making pretty good headway. You know, 
um, um, okay. so let's see. Maybe yeah. for the next meeting we can get a yeah no it we a, a we, further we, update. Brought, we we brought this thing up last um, last week and. You know, the people at the meeting, there were like six or seven different departments assembled there, so they takes time for it to get around to everybody. But we'll be... Um, You're we'll talking be about at the DEC. At the DEC, yeah. So we'll be following through with this on at least a weekly basis and keep pushing till, it, till it's done. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so next thing was the uh, the bottleneck we talked about, the resolution, resolution we passed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have an email from Rachel Grusin um, about water quality sampling with DEC for conditional uh, shellfish. Yeah, we discussed program. it at the last meeting. Right, and we talked about the possibility of two sites, Akabonic and Northwest Harbor. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be limited to one. So after some discussion with um, a few of the Baymen and Rachel and a couple of us, we decided uh, Northwest would probably be the best way to go. Yeah. That's They'll only run these conditional programs in places that are closed year round. Okay. So. In the and past, we ran one in Akabonic and one in Northwest Creek, but the area we used to do the conditional program is now open. It is open on a more regular basis. Over in Akabonic. Yeah, in Akabonic. Yeah, I talked to uh, two different Baymen and asked them about this, and you know, they both, I was like, Akabonic? And they were like, yeah, Akabonic's fine. You know, we have spots. It's not really, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and the other thing about Northwest is the reason that back portion isn't open is because there's been no test. They have no data. Mm -hmm. So because of that, they refuse to open it. So this would take care of that problem. That's great. Okay. Not a lot of and, and they there, don't so expect to have any problems with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just need the data. Okay. All right. So let's um, try and help them get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they need 15 samples. We, we, it's all worked out. I, we, 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 we agreed though, at the last, yeah. Now, now, one of the things, this program is going to require running these water samples up to DEC or possibly piggybacking with Southampton because they're also doing this program. Arlene is willing to do that for us if you guys are okay with it. Yeah, we're going to have to work out the logistics of it. Because it's, it's based on, a, what is it, quarter inch of rain? Yeah, but it has to, there's a lot of parameters that the samples have to be taken in. You know, they, they, they have to be taken after after a certain amount of rain, they have to be taken within a certain so time period. Time, eight hours. 36, no, it's gotta be like 36, 36 hours. hours. I don't have the thing in front of me, but there's protocols for everything. It has to be all kept <coughs> iced in a certain way and it has to be delivered to, it has to get to the laboratory within a certain time frame or else they don't do it. So we just, I mean, just, and. Uh, so Arlene's in the office, we can, yeah. You know, give her a few hours to run up there and drop it, and yeah, just well, part of the work, her work day. Who who will do the testing? The DEC does the, the testing. The DEC will do it, but they need someone to do the delivery. It yes. has to get to their laboratory. You know, yeah. in a, we did it in the past. There's all kinds of methods. Sometimes we'd meet their crew that was. Mm -hmm. at, we'd meet them at the college in Southampton, and we'd leave them. You know. It, 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 we, we just need the flexibility to work it out. So that's Rick, were you asking who's going to do the test the sample or who's going to collect the sample? Collect the sample. Collect the sample. That's Bill. I think you thought he meant who's going to test the sample. Well, yeah. You I meant believe, who's going to collect it. somebody in natural resources. Natural resources. That's what I thought. Collect the sample. These yeah. little details are going to work out. We yeah, just yeah, yeah. Kind of this is that, like that's the big problem is the manpower yeah. of getting all these samples. Yeah, yeah. And, and in a timely that's manner. That's the biggest stuff, issue. You know, and, and yeah. yeah. But I think we can work it out. Okay. Been as cooperative effort again. And at no time would any of us want. Arlene to get into the weeds because she's got to run right. up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm not opposed to, you know, paying her additional monies <laughs> to do this um, if she has a day off or whatever the case may be. Uh, I, you know, yeah. I don't want you to feel <laughs> pressured. <laughs> you know. we, yeah, we can afford it and it's a worthwhile cause. Maybe, good, maybe, good investment. We, maybe we can get a pair of waiters. <laughs> 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 All right. <coughs> Committee reports, Akabonic Hog Creep, ZBA application of 
M. Ho, 26 Bay Inlet Road. Yeah, so I did attend that, that ZBA hearing um, three weeks ago at this point or two weeks ago. Um, that night, they weren't even discussing Ho, um, but they had Zedlovich on the, on the agenda, um, and I did speak with regards to that. Um, Ho was one I, they already had a decision um, in mind for it, and I, uh, I'm so, I tried to contact somebody from ZBA, but I, I was should have done it earlier. I don't know exactly what they did uh, say about about Ho at the end. When I went to the meeting, they, they didn't have that to discuss. Um, they were going to render an opinion at the end, and uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know which way they had uh, decided on, on Ho. But with Zedlovich, um, that was an application where previously the applicant had been denied for variances on that property, um, and it's right up against, um, was it Hug Creek? Yeah, obviously. Um, and it's, it's some of the, the uh, property owners, the adjacent property owners work, were there against the applicant getting the variances. Um, I read that there were some planning board people who also spoke against it. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I got up and spoke a bit and just, just said that, you know, there, <coughs> the concerns didn't seem to affect necessarily the water, really. It was a lot of things about the privacy of the other um, property owners nearby and things like that. I didn't see how, from our perspective, there was anything really onerous about it anything that we needed to get involved in, or else I would have, you know, got a hold of everybody and, and tried to write some letter to them or something, but neither one of them were really anything terrible for the water. Um, this involved putting in a way better septic system, which is nice. Um, I'm not sure what the whole outcome was, though, in the end. Well, I think their main issue was that the, the pool is already too close to the pond. And right. they want to double the size of the pool. So I think there was some issues with oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the one with the triangular pool. Yeah, that, yeah. No, that one was more, um, they, they were re, they actually had a whole revised plan when I got there. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Is the other one? But when I got there, they had completely revised a lot of the, the, the specs of the plan they had. Um, and then the pool was much smaller. It was like a maybe 30% reduction in the size of the pool. And, and they, they made, kept most of it within the, within the setbacks with that, um, and the board put it on hold because they wanted to uh, see, to have time to digest the changes more and get back to it. Mm -hmm. um, but from what I saw with the reductions in, in the variances they needed and everything, it, it didn't seem nearly as onerous to me as it, as it did when we saw it written down on the, you know, the, the forms that we got. And our right. concerns are because we're a neighboring property owner. Yeah, there's a okay. small pond there. Um, what's it called? Egan, oh, there um, they had a, no, some other they names. had a different name. Something yeah. east and something west. Was it Egan? Not Egan's Pond. Um, no, it's good that we weighed in on it. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was there. It was, sorry, I'm sorry. It was like two weeks east ago. East Lionhead Pond. Yeah. Or something. Lion, yeah, something like that. East, east yeah, Lionhead Pond or Lionhead Pond. pond. Lionhead Pond. Yeah. I have the name for you. Yeah. Um, but it is a trustee owned pond. Yeah. It, it is a nice. <coughs> I talked to the guy, uh, the applicant, actually, and he was uh, seemed like a nice guy. And he said, mm -hmm. We really care about this pond. We think it's beautiful. We want to protect it. And, you know, and he was, he was going about how he looked at the, the plans and they revised it and sh you know, shrunk the pool size down and things like that to try to make way for it. So I don't know. It seemed like the kind of thing that the, the ZBA had it pretty under control. What was the setback? Do you recall? <coughs> for a the pool there? I think it's under the pool. Feet. <coughs> I think they're 25 feet too close. And it was like How many? 25 feet oh, too yeah. close, but it's been that way forever. The discussion like did, the did start about how that whole area there had a lot of these kind of things where there's this kind of grandfathered in, like, you know, non conforming, non -conforming well, properties, right. and that, you know, they didn't really want to see this just keep, <coughs> keep allowing it to be non conforming, and they want to start like, fixing that area. So, um, and I, from my understanding, I was well aware that the they, they want to demolish the existing yeah. structures. Mm -hmm. So the the argument is, once it's a clean slate, then they have to meet the sure. current, current setback. It's not. It's no longer non-conforming. Mm -hmm. so, so they're going to have to duke that out. Yeah, my impression was that the ZBA wanted them to, to be conforming. <coughs> the applicant was willing to make changes to mm -hmm. work towards that. Nice. Right. Okay. Wow. I have it as Lionhead Pond, also known as Hog Creek Pond, okay. Swan Pond. Swan Pond? Yeah, but 
Lionhead is the preferred name. All right, and then we have a notice of a complete natural resources special permit for the Lionhead Beach Property Owners Association bulkhead replacement. Okay. That's good. I think that's, yeah. Does that require a subsequent site visit by a committee member? I don't think so. Okay. They're looking for written comments about it. We don't have a problem, we're fine with it. Mm -hmm. right. yes. Yeah, we already said that. We <coughs> okay. Georgia Capons, one association, road frag money. Jim's not here. Yeah, Brian, do you have anything on it? No, no, not at this time. We'll table it. Harbor management report? Yes, um, you know, as everyone knows, we've been holding a series of meetings on the Deepwater Wind Farm South Fork project. And on December 11th, we will have our next meeting and the Deepwater team will be presenting their environmental findings on their uh, study of the Block Island turbines and cable route that they uh, installed to the Block Island area and the survey work that they've done for the proposed Deepwater Wind Farm South Fork. And uh, I was hoping that we would have that meeting here at the trustee, first December trustee meeting so that the public could uh, see it. It'll be on LTV, a nice meeting place. So if, if everyone is okay with that, uh, this is a meeting that has been a lot of anticipation around. In conjunction with our trustee work? It, it would potentially you know, rub up against our regular agenda. That's the one well, downside. It would what be, was, we what was the date, Rick? Through our agenda. Oh. December 11th. December 11th, okay. You know, the other opportunity is maybe we could start at six o'clock and, and start the meeting a little bit early. Uh, I like that. With respect to uh, having the deep water start presentation. early and finish up late, and that's fine with me. Is, is that okay? So maybe we could do a six o'clock start for the right? meeting. Yeah, yeah. Have it here. Is that a yes? Or? That's fine. It's oh, okay. My birthday, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> It's a meeting that day otherwise. Huh? Okay, okay, so let's do that. We'll, Same meeting right, so we'll, we'll have yeah. to notice yeah. the public that we're starting early. So what, what time are you we'll going to do that? What are you doing? So when and where? December 11th, here, 6 p.m. As part of the regular trustee meeting. Here at 6 p.m. Yeah. And Deepwater will present the first part of the meeting. Okay. I, I, won't, be, uh, I won't be present for that meeting, so I'll, I'll stand in. Right, okay. Andrew will be here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then just quickly on harbor management, uh, we are approaching uh, duck hunting season and we will probably be going out to visit blinds on some of our local waterways. Okay. So the harbor management committee will be in working in conjunction with Marine Patrol a little bit and going out to do some site visits on the duck blinds and removing any legacy derelicts we didn't get to last year. Great. Um, I just want to say one thing about the trustees and our commitment to this dialogue between us and the wind, mm -hmm. wind farm people? Deep water wind. Deep water, thank you. Um, we've actually written checks uh, to uh, the places that uh, these meetings have been held, and I just think it's important, uh, you know, we're kind of putting our money where our mouth is. Uh, so uh, I appreciate all the work. Uh, Rick has been doing, um, and again, uh, we've been putting the bill on a number of these uh, uh, meetings uh, that have been asked of us uh, uh, by the owners of, of where we're meeting. So, uh, again, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you. The meeting space has been a little tight to uh, mm -hmm. get a, a proper meeting hall that LTV can set up in. So it has been a challenge and you know, there has been a cost yeah. to accommodate the public so everyone can weigh in and learn about the project. Mm -hmm. And that's why there was some interest in trying to do the next meeting here at Town Hall. I'd even go a step further. I don't think there's a government agency that uh, has put in the work uh, that the trustees have ha uh, put in. And uh, for that, you know, I'm thankful. And uh, we're just trying to get to the bottom of it. We live here. Uh, you know, the first reaction is it's a green project. And that's, you know, who's not into uh, alternative, you know, uh, projects. But of course, we don't want it to be um, at the uh, expense of uh, hurting anybody. No, well, every meeting we've had has been particularly useful because we're getting all the details and we're getting them out 
in front of the public. Thank you, thank you, Rick. Yep, my pleasure. All right, Napeague Lazy Point, Curtis Geocubes and Sand Placement at 393 Cranberry Hall Road. Have you had a look, chance to look through I that? did. Was anyone here for that? Or? No, they dropped off the... Yeah, I saw it. I mean, I'd, it might be something where it actually would be kind of helpful to have someone here. Um, I, I think I know what they're saying, but uh, it might be better to hear, you know, hear it from someone on behalf of the applicant. Okay. So would you like us to reach out, Rick, and see if we can get an applicant or an agent yeah, to come I to would be, speak with I us about it? I don't think they yeah. have an agent. Yeah, I mean, they're basically saying that it's outside your jurisdiction, and I, I think I know why, but they're not being explicit about it. Okay. Do you? I mean, it's right on the water. I mean, it's what, on the beach. It's on the beach. On the beach. What I don't know is they cite, oh, let me open my, uh, uh, my. They cite a letter from. They cite the, uh, uh, the neighboring property. In 2011, the trustees issued a, a non jurisdiction letter on the neighboring property for what they contend was a similar project, but I don't have the details of that project. Yeah, the, 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 the neighboring property did put these sandbags in, and they've let them, you know, wait. Yeah, they're looking to see it right now. It's supposed to be a six-month emergency deal. Well, this, uh, that's under the town code. I, this looks like it's intended to be permanent, because they're planning to plant, to put sand over the top and plant. The town code, the zoning code... Um, Won't allow that. Yeah. Right, the zoning code... The only thing that the zoning code allows, and I think this is, they don't really say what coastal erosion zone they're in, but I'm assuming this is coastal zone three, um, which is an area on the Bay Beach where, where um, erosion control structures are not allowed. You can have temporary sand and textile bag, you know, textile bags, filled, sand filled textile bags, as a temporary measure. Yeah. I think for six months, you could extend it for another six months, something like that. Six months, and you're allowed to extend it for another three months, but, oh. but it's, um, right. it's that's obviously... Right. Um, but this appears to be a, intended as a permanent solution. So they presumably need a variance of the zoning board. You need a variance from the coastal erosion regs, and I, I assume they know that. That's not exactly, you know, it's not really your issue. But what they're saying here is, let me just, this 393, I want to see this on the GI. I don't think that's our area. Well, the, and if, I think they're saying they don't think you're on the beach. Yeah, so Their I don't survey think we goes do. down to the waterline. You know, per a discussion I had with Diane in the past, as I've often, you know, inquired about that, she said no, that that was not, in fact, the trustee's property. On what grounds? Um, that I don't know. I, you know. Okay. Well, the trustees definitely owned it. It's something we know right. that because right. in the 18, mid 1800s, right. a lot of this land was used for fish factories, and they did sell a lot of the land. Okay. So they, and again, I don't know where the conveyances are, but the trustees definitely owned the North Shore, of, you know, the south side of Nappy Bay at Cranberry Hill Road because when those fish factories began to operate in the 1840s, 1850s, 1860s, a lot of them. We're buying the land from the trustees, leasing it and or buying it. Hmm. Um, now, the trustees might very well have conveyed right to the waterline. So it's site specific as to whether we're involved? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so should we have uh, Arlene or Lori reach out and invite them <coughs> into one of the meetings? Yes. Yeah, I think, they I think they should state explicitly what it is the basis of their uh, assertion that you do not have jurisdiction. Okay. And then we can, you know, then we can deal with that. So yeah. we're talking about they want them to supply us with a deed? Uh, that might be part of it. All right now, all we have is the survey. Okay. I mean, if their position is, hey, we researched the title and we can't any find any evidence that the trustees own the beach here, then they should tell that to us. And if they have information to support it, I would probably want to see that. Okay. So we will reach out to them for more information. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go down and take a look at that. I went down, I was down here, oh, you I mean, did? the neighboring house, it's, you can even see it on the Google Earth, it's just the sandbags now, the, the, and it looks like the sandbags from one is, is contributing to the erosion of the house adjacent to it. But, but the, the other it, issue is this guy's looking to legalize the sandbags, you can't do that. It, it, and, no, we, well, I mean, this is, 
I mean, that's an, it's against the it code. It's a hard structure or something. It's a hard structure. It's against the temporary. Well, you, you can legalize it with a variance. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, but, the power but, to grant a variance. But it'd be a ZBA. But not us. We not, can't. Not you. But not, no. not, you know, the zoning issue is not your issue. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, that's, that's the zone, that's for the zoning board to deal with the town code prohibition. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check into the property ownership. Yeah, but they're um, I, I'd like them to supply us. Yeah. Let me just, uh, for instance, I mean, I think we should write out to the, reach out to them and say, you know, could you please supply us with the basis for your assertion that um, there is no jurisdiction. Now, again, they do cite a letter from from Diane McNally from 2011 on the neighboring property. But Curtis. It says yes. that was for, uh, for the Golden Berm project, but that was tax that number 28.1, I'm trying to. But she doesn't explain why. She just says right. that it's outside the jurisdiction. Right. Uh, Diane's letter said the Board of Trustees this is in 2011. Reviewed the information provided regarding the proposed berm construction on the above reference property. As no portion of the project appears to encroach into that under the jurisdiction of this board, a permit is not required from us. But we do not know why that conclusion was reached. Right. And she had said something similar to me about the whole right. length of that beach. So, it, you know, you know right. there is okay. something to it. It must be, there's probably evidence in that file. And actually, if, if someone could pull that file for me, I can take a look at that. That was the uh, Golden Berm yeah. project. I, I had assumed that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I can, if someone will forward that to me, I'll take a look at it. Uh, but I would also tell these people, this applicant, you know, to supply us with, you know, supporting oh. information. Get that one off. Yeah. Yeah. We'll look into the property ownership when they bought it, stuff like that. No, I mean, the ownership of the property is, it's, it depends on how it was sold, right? Well, it depends on how it was sold in the past. Yeah. It, it so is that something? In other words, can you trace it back to when the trustees <coughs> owned it, which might be possible here. You know, you're not going that far back. You owned the mid-1800s, yeah. and the fish factory properties were sold and transferred in, in the late 19th century periodically. So you might actually be able to trace this one back possibly to a deed from the trustees. It's not like you're going back to the 1700s. Yeah. You might, we might get that. Do we want but to I, that someone should, yeah. What you'd really want to do is, I think, ask the applicant to do that yeah. and provide you with the title search. Mm -hmm. That way we don't have to pay for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, it's going to be, uh, it's very likely that both these properties have the same story. Because it was probably it, all it's, sold. It is. They well, probably I mean, the two of them can do the title search together. The tax map number starts from the same 28, result. it's a decimal point. So they were originally the same owner. There was originally one piece of property. Yeah, this might have been Edwards' property because the Edwards family owned a lot of land down there. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, so Kurt, that's Curtis and Sirota. Um, Application for the Devon Yacht Club. So they're still waiting for an approval from us. I think Jim was. Was Jim one? He, he was. Yeah. yeah. Fall at the table. Actually, um, it's Mr. Walker. Correct. And when he was here last time, mm -hmm. we pretty much told him uh, that we would make a decision uh, at our next meeting because he was kind of anxious, I think, to get going. And I'm just echoing, you know, what he had said and what I remember. That's true. Um, and seeing that we do have history with them and we know what they're uh, up against, yeah. I, I would say um, let's. I, I would make a motion to issue the permit and. Uh, Jim said he was okay with it. Yeah. 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 He's not here, I know. But no, but we've, we've spoke about this is, this is, they do this on a regular They do this is a routine yeah. project, so I'll, I'll second your motion. Sure. Yeah, let's get this going. I don't want to hold them it up. It is last year's permit. Yeah. That's fine. They do this every so year. You're making a motion. Do I have a second? Yeah. Bill, yeah, I second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'm in favor, yes. So Good. They know, they know what they're doing. No, I mean, it's the same project they do every year. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, a request from Keen to sublease yes. house on lots 32S and 33S. Affidavit of domicile. New York license. Sac Harbor. Is that the East Hampton side of Sac Harbor? It's a PO box. It's a PO box. Right. It doesn't help. Doesn't help. Rick, can you look through this and Yeah, I don't have any documentation on you. But we <coughs> so we still need some documentation on that. I'm not sure if everything's in or not. Yeah, but you can put your physical address. Also. Okay. They're starting to ask you physical address on everything now, too. Pretty big, so you have to reach out to her and tell her we need some more information. Yeah. On this one? Yeah. Yeah, let me just see what I can get around real quick here. You know, at some, at some point, I'd like to look at that whole process to make sure it's not overly stringent, you know, or redundant. Um, just something to think about. And we don't need DNA and. <laughs> Kids library cards and <laughs> yeah. trying to make it uh yeah, streamlined effective. Yeah, fluid. yeah, definitely. I can tell you while Rick is doing that that I'm waiting on Mr. Vanderveer. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had an emergency, and uh, he'll be contacting me in a few days, and we'll do a site visit. Both Bill and I, I suspect there's a bunch of things going down there that will need an extra set of eyes. Yeah, we were going to be... As is out of the water, by the way. Oh, I was going to say, Bonnet Popeye has left the harbor. Oh, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. That was so, a pleasant surprise. When he reaches out to me, I'll let you know, Bill, and we'll yeah, go we'll take go a down look. Yeah, we'll get down and look over. We have the new survey, so... We are, uh, my office is trying to get a release from the attorney for the estate of Don Tisdale. And um, I'm, I, don't, I haven't received it yet, but I'm supposed to get a letter from the harbor master, uh, basically attesting to the fact that the barge was <coughs> derelict and of no value and they've got photographs. I took some photographs. Um, so I think if we supply that, the, uh, the attorney down in New Mexico wants, you know, he wants, ex he wants exchange releases. So you know, we'll give him a release He'll give us a release, and he just wants to see, he wants some evidence that in fact this this barge is is worthless. And I, I think we have good <laughs> evidence. You're able to supply that too, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks for following up on that, Rick. That was great to get yeah, that out of the harbor. You. That was a nice nice improvement for the harbor. And the unsafeness yeah. was taken care of. I mean. I mean, it was, <laughs> yeah, we waited till the ospreys were all done. Oh yeah, the osprey nest was also removed. Okay. Before that. Um, all right, well, I have a driver's license here, and I have an affidavit that stating that the, uh, the, the will be... The license the doesn't have a physical license. address on it, Rick. What's that? L license does not have a physical address. Um, no, but they don't always have to. I mean, what are you going to do? And the affidavit is what? A sworn, a sworn statement. statement. Sworn statement. She claims that she <coughs> resides at 168 Old Northwest Road. Mm -hmm. um, I did check the county GIS. She doesn't appear to own that property, but. Okay. And that's notarized? Um, that's yes, it's notarized. Okay. Sworn to on October 23rd. Mm -hmm. What else is missing? What do we do? Two forms of ID in the affidavit, or is it? She lived before that at 52 Union Street in Sag Harbor. I, I, I can check. I don't know whether that's in East Hampton or Sag Harbor. I think Harbor. that's on the, the South Hampton part. You know where that I think is? It's on the East Hampton part. It might be. I think it's East Hampton. I think it's right down by the Legion there. Let me just see. Hmm. VFW. Yeah. And they're what? Lease. They want a the lease. They want a lease from Union Street. Homeowner. 
I mean, the was They're just renting it, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I would say, in, in light of the fact that they're not purchasing but renting, and we do have the affidavit, I would be okay with that. And I certainly wouldn't want to hold them up. You know, to, <clears throat> if they need to get into this place. What other items do we normally have, Rick, that we might... We, we really, the affidavit of domicile, that's their sworn statement that they're an East Hampton resident. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you know, we have, uh, we ask for some other evidence of residency, such as a, uh, a license, driver's license or a voter's registration card. Um, remember, not everybody has to vote. So she supplied, supplied a driver's license, and that just indicates a P.O. box in Sand Harbor. Well, if I'm not stepping out of bounds, I would say I make a motion based on the information we have that we allow this individual to go forward and uh, rent out this uh, cottage, like so a better word. Uh, and it's a lease. It's a lease of the bottom line is if you're going to ask for an affidavit of domicile and they swear to it. What are you going to say? Yeah, right. no, that's why I'm okay with it. You can, <coughs> you can ask, you want an affidavit of domicile, they give it to you. You can't, you can't disbelieve it unless you got evidence to the contrary. There's my motion to accept it. A second. I'll, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. You seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we asked for that. We got it. So that's fine. Yeah, we'll hold it up. Sorry. Right. You know, the other thought I have, and I know it's after the fact, if we want to ask this person to send us, you know, congratulations, you know, we approve, but please, for our file, please send us one more piece of evidence <coughs> that you, in fact, lived where you said you lived. Uh, Is that okay? You have your, you already have your procedures. So I wouldn't yeah. do that after the fact. Yeah, okay. I just procedures and ask for I just meant for the file. Yeah. But again, do we stipulate yeah, once, that we once you approve lease? I think it's okay. Fine. All right, that's fine. We, do we stipulate that we only need one kind of proof of residency? She supplied what we stipulated, which yeah, is you the give domicile. Yeah. But it, is it worded in our in our regulations for this point that you have to have uh, two different pieces of no, proof okay. of residency? No, no, no right, just choices. one. So oh, we have fine. to stick with one. Then, if we say yeah. that in the, in All right. the so what is worth, by the way, fifty two Union Street was in the Southampton part of Sarah Harbor. Yeah. But she's claiming to currently live on Old Northwest Road, so. Okay. All right, payment of the bills. Uh, optimum, 165.72. Staples, 24.72 plus $382.02. Seacoast Enterprises, $201.62. Anthony Towhill for Seaview, $245. Herzog, Faller, and Schaefer, $2,150. That's for um, bookkeeping work. Um, uh, North Fork Water Supply Corp, $39.44. Star Island Yacht Club, $101.07. East Hampton Star, $38.36. Do I have a motion to pay the bills? I'll make a motion to pay the bills. No second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, we have minutes. Um, August 28th. You know, with the uh, election last week, I did not get a chance to delve into those uh, copies of the minutes that are on the agenda, so I ask that we table them until the next meeting. I looked over August 28th, but I haven't really looked at the... September 11th one. And then so Tom, if you're okay can, with the No, we, I mean, we can, we can table them for next time, no. if you haven't looked at them. And I mean, Dan's not here either, and so. Did you have a chance to look at the 28th? 28th I did, yeah. And were you okay with it? Seemed fine to me. That's fine. I mean, yeah. Let's, mm. let's just accept mm. it. It's one less that we have to deal with. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine to make, right. I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable making a motion for it. I just okay. I'm the only one who looked at them. And Good. But okay. I'll make a motion that we accept the, the minutes of August 28th. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. I want to get caught up on these, so. Sure. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you, Tyler. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and a financial report for the month ended October 31st. Brian, you usually Yeah, I did. That. I came a little early. I looked at, and everything seems to be in order, and I would make a motion that we accept the balance sheet that was presented to us. I took a good look, too, and there's some cool, yeah. interesting <coughs> stuff in here. I mean, noticing that we 
you know, we did have somewhat less income in some areas, but we also had way less expenses. And we're, we're, you know, we have more money in our funds than we did last year. That's great. Yeah. So we have, we've increased our assets. Um, we have, you know, we spent more on, on pump out boats. We spent more on personnel and office stuff, but we still came out with, with more money in the budget because we reduced legal expenses big time mm -hmm. over the last year. Mm -hmm. That'll change too. <laughs> in the near future. You know, we all, we wanted to, to have less money of, you know, yeah. legal expenses and we, we did. And we want to use the pump out boats as much. Yeah, we use. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We increase services to people. We need to go to, uh, I made a motion that we accept it. Okay. Second. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Okay. And these are available for everybody, of course, from the public. I mean, uh, the trustees' assets are currently seven hundred and forty-four thousand three hundred and forty-three dollars and ninety-eight cents. So we have close to three quarters of a million dollars. And there's always copies here if anybody wants them. It's all public info, of course. Okay, report of the clerk. The only thing I'm going to bring tonight is uh, we opened scallop season yesterday in town waters, and all the reports I've gotten was that it was very good. It was a great opening, a nice turnout by a lot of local folks, yeah. uh, a lot of people getting their one bushel recreational limit, uh, some commercial guys out there you know, getting their three bushel limit. Marine Patrol was out checking licenses and takes, so it was a, a nice yeah. community setting down in Three Mile Harbor on Sunday, and that wasn't out today, but uh, I heard just But opening it on Sunday seems to be very, seems to work out very well. Didn't yeah, it? a lot of people really liked I like that, it. that they got out there. Yeah. Have we had any, any complaints how, about how it? Was no. it, how, was it, how did it look? Look, there was a, a solid abundance <coughs> of mature scallops Three Mile in Three Mile Harbor. Right. So it was a really a nice set. Uh, I've only heard about Three Mile. Okay. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I would try to go over to Nat Peak today, but I didn't, I didn't get there. Was there or Lake Montauk, anyone know about that? I haven't gotten any feedback yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. All in all, it seems like this is, you know, it's going to be a good year. Good. Yeah. What, was in, what was in Northwest Harbor? Uh, I think the area that Barley had seeded scallops was actually behind the line, so I think it's going to be a December opportunity uh, mm. for a second cut. So that might be an interesting late season development, help out around holiday time. Cool. Yeah. All those New Year's scallops. Yeah. And isn't the county doing some oh, scallop in uh, Laos Point? Uh, well, that's coming up, um, I guess, this week. Later this week, they're going to start that project. The and are they going to go to the ramp? Do you know? Uh, it's the go I don't know if they're going to make it to the ramp because of the makeup of that bottom line. Oh, there. yes, yes, yeah. right. Yeah, the this, the, they're going to do this the way we did it last year. They're going to do it with excavators. Oh, they are. Okay, so they're going to take. But I think it's a larger excavator. So they're going to And they're going from both sides, oh, Gerard so and. They're going to they're going to take the point off it on the uh, Gerard Drive side, and they're going to do basically the same project we did last year. Mm -hmm. It's all staked out if anybody wants to go yeah, there. Yeah. You, you can actually do the main channel with no, they're land based they're excavators? They're taking the point off like we did last year. The it point it, it does go to the rod points on the, on the Laos point side. Okay. And they're going to take that point that's gone all the way back into the harbor on the Gerard tribe. They're going to, yeah, they're going to bring, they're going to bring it back with an excavator. Uh, I guess the survey work showed that the uh, the channel going out and everything is still in pretty good shape, that the main bulk of the sand was in those two spots. But when you said they're taking off on the on the Laos Point side. Last year we took the, the point off, that point that was starting to block the channel. Which direction was it going from? Around the left side. Bending into the yeah. harbor. In other words. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, that's right. when we had to we had to do an emergency. We took a hundred feet off that. Well, they're going to take like another hundred feet off it now. Uh, mm. it's, it's all dredging. It's all good. I didn't realize that was so far along. But, I mean, yeah. I know there were concerns it, about yeah, having it that channel just, be too yeah. straight. There were some people always concerned about that channel being just too straight, and then it, it has the increased flow, which causes more sedimentation, and then fills in faster. And then having more of the curve, which was there, I guess, you know, over. Well, you know, a decade ago or so. It's, it's not going to be a straight shoreline. It's going to be coming out a little bit. There's no plans to, like, uh, shore that up in some way to prevent the sand from coming back into the inlet? 
Well, it's going to be the same thing. We told them we wanted it moved down around. Okay. We don't right. want it piled up on the point. All right, it's so they are down. doing it's gonna go down. Yeah. what we yeah, wanted. It's going to go okay. further south. All right. Yeah. yeah it's like, just like all of a sudden they're just going to come yeah, in right. whenever they want. It's like, yeah. all right, good. Yeah, they're going to get rid of it. Yeah. So it doesn't make its way back in. All right. No, because that dead end just keeps coming around. That's yeah. it's. Because I know we talked about, you know, doing some, thinking about a, a betterment of some sort where we could get them to go further if we paid <coughs> some money yeah. for it, that kind of thing. Well, th 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 that what's going on with the job right now is it's totally a county operation. Yeah. They're using yeah. their contract, they're, they're paying for it. We've had conversations about us getting involved after they're done. Yeah. So, but that's. Mm -hmm. But, but. We're going to see, see how they do and then we can see yeah. what it's going to be. It, more. I believe what's going to end up happening is it's going to be stockpiled at the furthest point that they were contracted to bring it. Okay. And okay. from that point, we will work something out with another contractor to bring it the west, the rest of the way down. All right. Sounds so we'll get it, get it as far south as we can. Yeah, yeah. So the project we did last we'll year worked out very well. Yeah. Um, and I think this is. Uh, uh, it, the contractors can't, you know, the, the county is going to do, the county is going to do what it's going to do. And when they're done doing what they're going to do. We'll yeah, we can't do anything until they're finished. In. They don't want two different contractors on the site at the same time. Of course. So basically, yeah. we're just watching what they're doing right now and approving it. All right, we'll see if we okay. can fix it up more. There's a lot of guys still fishing there. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, correspondence. We have emails. Um, about harmful algae blooms. Um, well, seems to be the same culprits all in Southampton. Yeah, all of, this, all of the ones I've looked at have not. Um, Anyone know where Roth Pond is? What? Just out of curiosity, Roth Pond? Roth, Roth. Roth Pond, R-O-T-H. Never heard of a Roth Pond. Southampton. I imagine it's Southampton. Southampton. Yeah, no, it's definitely there. They're still getting algae blooms. I don't know what they're going to do with Lake Aguan. Strange. That, that's a cesspool. Open that to the ocean. God. They really should let that. All right. Um, South Pole. And what was the last? I heard global warming's worse than the South Pole. Oh, thing. yeah. South Hold let us know that they were opening their scallop season um, November 6th. So, anybody have anything else? No. Do I have a motion? They have the same thing in South Hill where the commercial starts on Monday? Well, the and then they do it? They, they, they started it on a Monday. Yeah, okay. So they don't give the recreational people a day uh, doing Apparently not. Seems nice. Okay. Motion to close. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Good meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Brian.